Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Sheila Joy. I'm NASCO's Executive Director. And um, we're just really pleased that so many have decided to join us for this very brief webinar. It should only last about 30 minutes, um, but it'll be packed with some great information. Uh, we have many NASCO members on the call today. We also have very many, <laughs> quite a few non-members. So we really wanna thank you especially for being here. Um, it's really interesting because um, the more I'm in this industry, the more I see we all care about one real true thing, and that is our communities. And the best way to protect and to guide our communities is to ensure that we have the proper funding for underground infrastructure. So whether you're a member of NASCO or a non-member today, hopefully you will learn a lot about um, some of the advocacy that we've been doing. Um, we will also learn more about what we plan to do in December with our first ever virtual fly-in in DC. And I'm just really pleased to, uh, to share this with you. We have a lot of um, NASCO participation and I appreciate that very much. So I'm going to kick off with a brief video. It's only four minutes, but I think that it does a really good job of sharing with you why NASCO cares about these, these issues and some of the policy recommendations that we have put in place that will be a big part of um, what we share with DC in the following week. So thanks again for being here. I appreciate you very much. Thanks. NASCO, the National Association of Sewer Service Companies, exists to set standards for the assessment, maintenance, and rehabilitation of underground infrastructure, and to assure the continued acceptance and growth of trenchless or no-dig technologies. Underground infrastructure can mean a variety of different kinds of buried infrastructure, but for NASCO, it primarily means municipal wastewater and stormwater collections and conveyance systems. Without these pipes being well-maintained, communities will be disrupted, local economic activity will suffer, and the environment will be at risk. NASCO's vision is to build awareness of aging underground infrastructure and to provide viable solutions through education, technical resources, and industry advocacy. NASCO members include the municipalities or utilities who own the systems and the contractors who employ local skilled labor to do the work, along with other companies and organizations aligned to the wastewater industry. As a 501c6 trade association, it is NASCO's responsibility to advocate for the protection of the environment and public health through the inspection, maintenance, and repair of aging infrastructure before it fails. One of the key ways NASCO does this is through education. NASCO's Pipeline Assessment Certification Program, or PACP, is a cornerstone in the proper assessment of sewer conditions. Ensuring that system owners and contractors are speaking the same language, PACP is an integral part of identifying conditions, grading their severity, and providing the data necessary for effective asset management. Identifying areas with the highest risk of failure, system owners can focus resources on the areas in most need of maintenance or repair. Unfortunately, even with immediate repair needs identified, shortage of funds on the local, state, and federal levels greatly challenge a system owner's ability to keep underground infrastructure systems healthy. Why? Because sewer and water systems are typically out of sight and out of mind, with repairs made only when disasters such as sewer system overflows and even sinkholes occur. So what can be done? NASCO has identified three key recommendations. Recommendation number one, increase funding for collections and conveyance infrastructure. Specifically, NASCO encourages expanded funding through federal programs to increase funding to assess, rehabilitate, and repair or replace wastewater and stormwater collections and conveyance systems. Additionally, the Government Accountability Office should complete a report to Congress analyzing the state of collections and conveyance infrastructure and the national need for its maintenance and repair. Recommendation number two, strengthen asset management requirements and funding. A good way to accomplish this is by requiring system-wide asset management plans for all applications for federally subsidized grants and loans. 
It should also be required that certified inspectors perform inspections of collection and conveyance systems, and that a standardized identification and assessment method be used to assess pipe conditions. Finally, Technical and grant assistance should be provided to hardship communities that lack the financial and technical resources to develop comprehensive asset management plans. Recommendation number three, maintain regulatory compliance enforcement. NASCO recommends the full funding annually to federal programs and offices that directly and indirectly ensure that the Clean Water Act and National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, NPDES, permits remain in full regulatory compliance. To download NASCO's full policy position document and get engaged, please visit nasco.org today. Hopefully that gives you a, a pretty, it's rather broad, but gives you an overview of why we care about these issues. And it'll hopefully help the rest of this presentation make a little bit more sense to you. So to, now I'd like to introduce uh, John Sickles. John is the chair of NASCO's Government Relations Committee. He served that role for the past couple of years. So I'll turn it over to you, John. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sheila. Um, for the last several years, NASCO has held an in-person uh, annual legislative event, typically in, in December, where NASCO members uh, speak to the legislators about issues that are important to NASCO. This year, we're going to be having a legislative fly-in, and the purpose of today's webinar is to make everyone more comfortable in interacting with their legislators um, you know, in this virtual event. I would like to stress that your legislators are very interested in hearing from you. Um, they're very interested in what their what issues are important to their constituents. Today we'll talk about how to get those issues across effectively to those uh, legislators. Uh, it's going to be a very busy rest of the year in 2021 for uh, issues that matter to NASCO members, specifically. We're going to be seeing a COVID re uh, recovery package. Um, we're going to be looking at an annual uh, appropriation bill, an infrastructure bill. In 2021, we expect to see a water bill and clean water uh, SRF legislation. During today's webinar, you're going to be hearing a series of speakers. We've had several past participants, uh, Chase Daney, Frank Hendricks, and uh, Dan Weber. You'll also be hearing from our consultant, Steve Dye. So I would like to introduce Dan, Dan Weber um, with Kaiser Premier. Thank you, John, uh, and hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I think uh, last year was my first uh, year attending what we call the fly-in, and uh, uh, I have to tell you I was a, a bit apprehensive of what I might experience uh, on the trip, but. Uh, uh, what what I what I found it was uh, extremely interesting for me, and really a great learning experience to see how um, how things work, as they say on the hill. And uh, you know, for me, it became pretty clear, uh, other than what we see on TV, what goes on uh, uh, in our uh, national capital is uh, where to get money and how to spend money. And uh, uh, our representatives are there to are there to listen and hear and and uh, I was quite surprised how interested uh, they really they really were in the messaging uh, that we had. So uh, as you know, leaders of your businesses and as uh, uh, by the way, that's Joe Schadefer. That's not me in the picture. Sorry, uh, Sheila, I just couldn't find a photo of me while we were there, but. Uh, uh, Joe and I worked together, and I was in this particular meeting with Joe, and uh, that was one of the, the head staff members uh, uh, for our one of our Michigan representatives, and and you know we um, it gives gives us a chance to one state what our mission is, and two um, show them where uh, funding is coming from and to support that funding, and. And once we went through it once or twice, we had uh, Steve Dye had set up several meetings for us. Uh, I found it to be um, uh, a great opportunity 
to express uh, the needs to support our specific industries. And, um, you know, that led with uh, uh, some follow-ups, a lot of follow-up emails to a lot of them. And I was quite surprised and taken back by how well they received our information and stayed with it throughout the year. So, um, you know, I give a lot of credit to this committee uh, for getting this started and the efforts that we put forth uh, by Steve and Sheila to arrange. Uh, it takes a lot of planning to put these things together, and uh, uh, but they were well organized, and we bounced around from one uh, office to another. And uh, though this year it'll be a little different, the way we go about it being virtual, uh, I really encourage all of you to uh, to participate in it. You know, you got to come prepared do a little homework. Um, Sheila and Steve and the rest of the committee has got uh, a lot of the details together. So if you just take a little time and, and prep for it, um, we can really make an impact and, and help uh, uh, push our agenda forward and get the what's most importantly, funding into the underground uh, infrastructure. So um, that's, uh, that's my two cents worth on it. Perfect timing, Dan, because I think we lost you a little bit there. So thank you for sharing that. So now we'll turn it over to Steve Dye. Thanks, Steve. Hey, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Sheila. Uh, yeah, good afternoon all or good morning, wherever you all are. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and uh, thank you to those of you who have registered so far to participate in the fly-in, uh, the virtual fly-in that will be the week of December uh, 7th through 11th. Uh, and Chase later will explain how to do it if you have not yet registered. I'll, I'll go through some of the tools for a successful meeting, some, some of the things we're going to provide for you to, to help the process go smoothly. Uh, and, and at the end, we can answer any questions that remain. Um, next slide, please. So, yeah, um, you know, we're, we're going to do a couple things that will make it really easy on you, hopefully. Um, we're going to, when you register, uh, we will arrange for your setting up your meetings. Uh, that will entail me reaching out to the congressional office. I will reach out to the scheduler and the water policy staff member for the members of Congress that you have. So you'll have one House member and two senators. Uh, and I will request a meeting for, uh, for you uh, and possibly some other folks from your state uh, to, to do a meeting with the congressional office. Um, since since there'll probably be multiple people from some states, um, I will uh, I will try to bundle a few of you together so that way you're not there flying solo. Um, I will try to be in as many of these meetings as possible, um, but I would prefer to be in the kind of the, the third person in the meeting, uh, fourth person in the meeting, uh, and it, I'll, the expectation will be mostly that you uh, and your colleague from that state will be doing most of the, the representation of NASCO and your company that you're there on behalf of. Um, so I will set up the meeting. Uh, that will require a little coordination between the congressional offices and you and the other folks from your state to find the best time that works. That week of December will be a busy week in Congress. Members of Congress will be back in town. Uh, they're going to be trying to wrap up the legislative uh, session for uh, 2020. Uh, and there'll be, a, a, you know, in a lame duck session, they're, they're, the FY20 uh, one appropriations need to get finished, uh, and the, there's a, the continuing resolution will end on December 11th. So they're going to have to pass something or pass a continu another continuing resolution, uh, which they'll most likely do because they're going to roll that into after uh, President Elect Biden gets sworn in. Uh, they'll probably wrap up the FY21. So we uh, then, but that, that's actually perfect timing for us to be in the in there talking about what we need as a sector for water uh, infrastructure investment funding. Um, so as I said, we'll set up the meeting. The, we're doing a slide deck. You'll have a slide deck prepared for you with all the information you're going to need for your meeting, a script to go accompany that slide deck, including in that, in that slide deck, there will be the video you just saw at the beginning of this webcast. It'll start off your meeting. Then you'll have some uh, talking points, some slides that kind of facts and figures and information that set up that the ask that we have for you. We're going to focus in on uh, water, the need for more funding for water infrastructure is our, is our number one request uh, during these meetings. There's other re uh, policy requ or priorities that NASCO has, uh, asset management and enforcement are still important, but in the context of what's happening during this lame duck session, focusing on water infrastructure 
uh, I think is probably our, our best use of your time right now. Um, we'll also have talking points and tip sheets that'll be made available um, in, in advance of your meeting so you can kind of do some, do some studying and be prepared. And then post-meeting, uh, you'll want to follow up with those offices and say thank you for your time, answer any questions that they may have as a result of your conversation that you weren't able to answer at the time, uh, things like that, sending them links to materials, do, the, the, the policy recommendations document, the video and stuff like that. Um, and I will provide the text for the, the, those emails too. It makes it easier on you. All you have to do is cut and paste it into the email address that I give you and you send it. So, so you're the point of contact with that congressional office. That's really what's important is that you become the, the face, the representation for NASCO and your company to the member of Congress because you're the constituent and they want to hear from you more than they want to hear from, from me or anybody else. Um, next slide, please. So what will be expected of you will be a little bit of, a little bit of work, not a lot of work. Like I said, it won't be too hard. Um, you know, once you've registered, I will send you your names of the members of Congress. Uh, this a future slide here will show you what to do there um, to research them. Um, you'll uh, you'll do you'll run the meeting. You'll have you'll upload the slide deck and you'll play the screen share the slides uh, from your from your computer to the to the congressional office. Uh, you'll do most of the talking and after the meeting you'll do the follow-up um, so with the meetings um, congress cannot initiate zoom meetings but they can be invited to participate in zoom meetings so you could use zoom as a platform if your preference would be some other means like go to meeting or teams those also work um, so uh, we'll when, when we arrange for the the time and place for the meeting uh, we'll sort out what what platform to be used uh, those, for those meetings uh, and the invitation to be to, to go to go out to have that meeting. Uh, I have a full Zoom account. NASCO has a full Zoom account. Uh, you all, some of you with your companies, may have uh, other have a Zoom account or other uh, means of doing it through Teams or something else. Um, the, the 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 technological side of it isn't that difficult to, to sort out. I think the the administration of the meeting. Uh, uh, running your slides, running you run the slide deck and you doing the talking is the, just you know the the part of it that you'll need to take responsibility for once that when the meeting goes forward. Um, but I I think in this virtual format, most of us have figured that out already. If you are challenged by that in any kind of way, we're we're more than happy to help you. Myself, anybody from NASCO, we're all become very competent in this format, so we'll 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 make sure it works out right for you. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so in your in advance of your meetings, um, like I said, you we expect you to do a little research about who your members of Congress are. Um, I'll send you the names of those people, but you need to know who they are as people, individuals. Read their bio, see what committees they're on, see where they land politically on the scale: Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. You know that whole kind of gamut of things. Uh, that way, when you're having your meeting, you're not kind of stepping into something you may not want to be stepping into if you feel that if the member of congress is very conservative and doesn't support any federal funding for any kinds of uh, projects you'll have to still make the request and make the explanation for it but you may get challenged by them in some way about like well why do you think it's important that the federal government give money well the federal government gives money because uh it's it, the the communities don't have the necessary depth of financial resources they need to do to have to comply with the clean water act obligations which is a federal law um those sorts of things so these links here are uh to a few sites that would that'll give you info about your members of congress the house uh, link there and the senate link there when you log and hit those on the top of the pages there'll be uh uh, little boxes you enter either your zip code or the state you're from and it'll pull up the websites for your members of Congress. The, the second, the third um, link there, govtrack.us is a third party, uh, a private organization and they do a good job of kind of looking, you could search your member of Congress with your address and they'll pull up all kinds of voting history of that member, you know, where they've fallen politically on things. Uh, it's it's kind of a just more comprehensive stuff. Uh, it's non nonpartisan, but I, I find it informative for just educating yourself a little bit about your members of Congress. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, core elements of a successful meeting, um, practice, you know, be prepared, uh, be on time. Uh, those are sorts of, you know, advance your meeting. Uh, when you get into the meeting, introduce, your, introduce NASCO. Uh, the slide deck will include that information as part of that video you'll see. Uh, that does a good job of introducing NASCO, but feel free to a little elaborate on the importance of NASCO for your 
for your company and you individually and the, the, our sector, uh, introduce your company. Uh, you know, the, the members of Congress, their congressional, their, their members, the, the members themselves and the staff want to know who their constituents are, want to know who their employers are. Tell them a little bit about what your company does in their congressional district. Um, and then, you know, the policy, the review the policy, NASCA's policy uh, recommendations. Like I said before, we're going to be focusing during these meetings on water infrastructure funding. On uh, that will be in the slides that you will have. Uh, it'll kind of drill down into that. So it won't be too hard for you to do it, but it's important that you make a very uh, firm, comprehensive ask, make a re request that there be action by the federal government, by Congress, to fund, to provide more federal funding for water infrastructure. And that'll be part of your slide deck, but it'll be, it, it'll be important that you be clear on that, that ask. Uh, and then, um, you know, the other part is the soft side. You know, you want to establish yourself as um, a, a good person for them to know and them to, to get information from about water infrastructure funding, about um, what, what is going on in their community communities. Um, provide, be a source of information. Dan and, and Frank and Chase and, jo and John have all done a very good job and other members of NASCO's Government Affairs Committee and broader uh, membership have all done very good jobs of establishing those kinds of relationships over the last couple of years and being a source of contact for members of Congress when they have a question they want information or just to kind of loop back around with them later and tell them about what our priorities are just to remind them that during these critical times during this these the, when Congress is working on a big potentially a big infrastructure package a COVID re recovery package that water needs to be part of that mix and that water funding for water infrastructure helps a lot of communities um so and um the final point point there is that they also want to be able to pass information along to you on what they're doing uh because they want to they you know they're, they're members of congress they want to get reelected. they want to kind of brag a little bit so that establishes that relationship too um next slide please so a typical meeting, I'm running a little long here, so I'm going to try to go a little quicker. So, so a typical meeting is, um, you know, you're going to do a brief introduction. They're only Meetings are only 20 to 25 minutes long. Brief introduction, you're going to play the video, you're going to go over the ask, uh, like I said before. You're going to have a little bit of a, then you'll have some dialogue, you'll, you'll do some Q&A and engage that, that kind of, that personal connection that, that we want you to have uh, during that. Uh, during that phase of the, the meeting. And then um, review any talking point, key points and then follow up items. And then once again, thank them for the particip participation and offer to be a resource. If you wanna invite them in a post COVID environment to come and do a tour of a, of a site or a facility, or one of your facilities, feel free to do that. That's always good. That kind of grassroots connections, they love that stuff. They love to come out. Members of Congress and their staff love to come out. Um, and yeah, I, I think I skipped over before you know, in most cases, you're probably going to be meeting with a congressional staff member. Um, this is, like I said before, it's a busy time in, in that week in Congress. But uh, in a virtual setting, a lot of members are still doing uh, virtual jump, jumping on a virtual meeting. So you will get some members of Congress too, hopefully. Uh, but but be prepared for it to be a staff member, which is fine too, because the staff members have a lot of say and influence on what their the member of Congress does and 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 uh, how they how they vote on things. Um, okay, next slide, please. Um, as I said before, key rec our core recommendations are uh, three of them, uh, funding for water infrastructure, strengthening asset management, and uh, maintaining regulatory compliance enforcement. Like I said, we are going to focus in on the funding part of things. The, uh, the, the right now during the lame duck, as, Dan, as John mentioned earlier, focusing on some of these infrastructure pack, some of this, these packages that would provide some money for water infrastructure potentially, uh, the, at least at the very least the, the annual appropriations bills. They're also working on the, the Water Resources Development Act of 2020, uh, which would be reauthorization of the Clean Water Act. They may do a coronavirus package. Uh, another one, maybe a smaller scaled back one, but that may have some money in there potentially for water, at least if nothing else would have money for, for uh, municipal governments that would then direct some potentially some funding for water infrastructure. So we'll be focusing in, like I said, during our meetings on a water infrastructure. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the, the kind of the, the, the big ones in the, on the authorization side of things, what's happening right now is on the WERDA bill, the Water Resources Development Act of 2020, they're negotiating it right now. Uh, that would reauthorize some core programs that NASCO's members benefit immensely from, the Clean Water SRF, the OSG grants program that's referenced there on the left-hand column under programs. 
That is the new uh, sewer overflow and stormwater municipal reuse grant program that NASCO championed in the WERDA 2018 bill. Uh, and that was authorized at $225 million for two years. It, it now needs to be reauthorized. The House is putting forth a reauthorization of $400 million per year for five years. So we're, we're very you know, bullish on that number, obviously. So um, we ask that during your meetings, you'll be talking a little bit about uh, the importance of funding for, and those are in the slides again, that we will have for you for your congressional meetings. We'll be talking a little bit about the importance of providing funding for that OSG grant program. Then WIFIA, most of us know about already, clean water enforcement, the House word of bill, uh, which is, which is rolled into the House Moving Forward Act, as you see on that right-hand column, it's called, um, that, that uh, they, they have some enforcement money in there. Asset management is in both in the House and the Senate bill. These are all gonna be things in the slides again, like I said, but you'll be able to kind of, uh, you'll be talking a little about those programs. Uh, so you understand, you know, I have this slide here, so you understand a little bit about what's at, on the table right now. Um, next slide, please. And then on the appropriation side of things, and now to clarify for those of you who under, want to understand the process a little bit better, there's two, two things that Congress does. They authorize programs and they appropriate programs. So the authorization is kind of establishing the bench, the, the, the structure of a, a federal program, the amounts of monies that are allowed to go towards those programs. And then on the appropriation side, they take what's been authorized and they, they give the money to those programs based upon what they can, they feel that the budget can afford to, to fund at that particular time. So the Clean Water SRF obviously is the, one of the most important programs for, for our sector. Um, what we've asked for for 2020, the FY 2021 bill is $1.6 billion, which was funded in FY 20, but we're asking for a doubling of it. Three, we're just rounding it to $3, trillion, $3, 3 billion uh, for FY 2021. Uh, for the Clean Water SRF. For the WIFIA program, uh, we want to level fund it at uh, $55 million. And for the OSG program, we've asked for $225 million because that's what it's authorized for essentially. Um, moving on, please. I think that's it for me. I'm going to hand it over to, to Frank, who's, like I said before, done a fantastic job uh, with this uh, experience so far. Uh, and so um, go ahead, Frank. Thanks, man. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. Um, guys, I just, uh, just looking back of why participating in this, um, the opportunity just to go up last year, uh, just as a kid, just watching Washington, D.C. And, and, and everything that goes along with it, what, what I found was really neat is, um, kind of what was said before, is uh, they want to hear from us. Um, my first office, we went into um, um, uh, Senator Gordon's office, and it was really neat just to hear his staffers discussing some of the stuff that Steve just mentioned discussing some of the things that they already know that obviously they've done their homework, like we're expected to do our homework. They, they made it easier for us to, to talk to them about these, these events. And um, what, what I noticed is when we try to lay out and, and offer them NASCO's recommendations, um, it's amazing. Now I got some, some of my local offices with Representative Salela and Marco, Senator Rubio's office is um, they brought up local things. That's, that's, a, that's that's close to my heart is living here in South Florida, rising waters, uh, treatment plants, um, obviously sewer rehab that's been going on in the area. They're very familiar with the stuff that's going on locally, which um, is really neat because um, just some of the work that we do in, with my company and the industry itself, we work a lot in South Florida doing this work. So it's really neat that they understand some of the stuff that we ask about and they're very familiar, let alone their offices are right next to our offices and it, it, they, we, we, like uh, Steve mentioned before, is I invited them out to our sites, but unfortunately, COVID struck and um, haven't had that opportunity, but I kind of look forward to it when we get back, uh, hopefully rolling and getting back up to Washington. But using this opportunity that, 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 that I'd like to think that um, it, it's neat because I can put a personal face on what I do for a living and how I, as a member of NASCO and fighting for this industry, and show what we do and the programs. Many of them said, we've seen your trucks. You know, we've seen this being done. We understand this. So it's really, really neat when you can go back and realize that what you do and the money that obviously we're here to, to work for our companies, but we're also here to try to get more work and to have more work out of Washington. So just to wrap it up, I, I really enjoyed uh, the time up there. Obviously the virtual is gonna add a little bit different uh, 
uh, kind of turn to it, but looking forward to it. And if any of you have any questions or uh, recommendations or anything that, that I experienced up there or discussing, um, I'll be glad to discuss it with you guys, but I appreciate the time. And now um, talking about next steps, we're going to Chase Daney. Thanks, Frank. Um, Chase Daney, been the co-chair with John Sickles uh, the last couple of years. And I uh, just kind of want to talk to everyone about what the next steps are and getting prepared for the fly in, in December. Um, fortunately, quite a few people uh, decided to join us today, but uh, not everyone has registered. So if you haven't taken the opportunity to register for the fly-in, please go to nasco.org slash events and register for the fly-in. Um, that's important because as we're getting prepared, uh, Steve's going to put us in pods, groups of three or four, um, to set up these meetings. And when we get into how to get prepared for the actual fly-in, it will be important to know who our pod is. Um, on top of actually uh, registering, it would also be nice. Um, we'd love for everyone. Uh, we, we noticed that there's some people that aren't members of NASCO. Um, love for everyone to join. So if you could also take the opportunity to go to NASCO and go to nasco.org and join and become a member. Uh, we'd love to have you. Um, as we get closer to the December fly-in, they'll check your email uh, in your inbox. You'll get a fly-in toolkit that will have the presentation slides, the video for the uh, meetings that you'll want to use, as well as the talking points um, that Steve went over today. Um, so th that'll be an important resource. Um, but with that is be prepared. And one of the ways we recommend everyone to be prepared for your fly-in is once Steve um, kind of notifies who's in your pod, I think it'd be really great for everyone to schedule a, a meeting with your pod to, if you're, if you're lucky enough, you'll know everyone in your pod, but um, good opportunity, you might not know everyone that well. And so if you could introduce each other in your pod and what, what will be nice about that is um, everyone brings a little bit different to each meeting. And what I mean by that is that our, our last fly-in, I, I had the opportunity to be with Dan Weber and Joe Schottifer. Um, Dan coming from a manufacturing standpoint, Joe coming from a contractor standpoint, and then my company kind of comes from a, a standpoint that kind of ties the information that's collected out in the field with the GIS and asset management. And so when you get to more of the uh, roundtable discussion, um, it's nice to kind of know who will be able to bring what to the uh, discussion with the different co congressional members and their, their staff members. Um, and really the last thing is to relax as hard as it is to uh, tell you to relax. I've done three of these. Um, you're with people who, uh, everyone likes the sewer industry, everyone wants a clean sewer industry. It's, it's not that hard of an ask, we're not, very controversial so it's it really is just a, it's a nice discussion between yourself and the and the congressional members that you're meeting with um, at this point we'd like to turn it over for any questions that anyone may have and other, other than that appreciate everyone's time so chase i don't see any questions um, but I would like to invite any of you who may have something in the future, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me, my, oh, Steve. I didn't know, I just, before we wrap up, I'd like to add one more thing to it. Sure. If, if you are planning on registering, um, please do so soon, because the sooner I have people in, my, in the registration system, the sooner I'm able to start setting up meetings. And as Chase said, we're gonna try to bundle people in small groups, uh, so we'll get, uh, so we'll ha have little teams uh, that'll help the process go smoothly. And with the, with the Thanksgiving holiday in the mix there, it makes things kind of tight around the scheduling. So please just register as soon as possible. Sorry, go ahead, Sheila. Looks well, like we did have question. someone raise their hand. Um, so I am going to... Oh, I see that, yep, question. Should we mention their reelection or butter them up regarding <laughs> their past practices? Um, yeah, I, I would say stay away from politics if you can. I mean, if you want to say something along the lines of congratulations on your reelection, that's totally fine. Don't weigh into anything going on on national elections and who's controlling Congress and who's going to be president, things like that. You know, but if you want to, you know, talk a little bit about, you just mentioned their congrat congratulations, welcome, you know, I'm happy to see you got reelected, something like that. That's, that's totally fine. Um, and past practices, 
uh, if you if they've been good for our sector, if they've voted in favor of things and supportive of like a you know more money for water infrastructure and things like that, absolutely say thank you for your past support. We really want you. We really appreciate that. We recognize that. Um, that's totally fine. Um, how do we decide who will run the meeting amongst the pod? Um, I will probably uh, designate somebody to to be the leader. If it's somebody who is. Uh, done this in the past. Um, I will probably probably put the put the onus around them a little bit to be the the leader. But if it's somebody that has never done this in the past, um, you know, what, they'll be the leader. Um, if there's nobody in that kind of group, if there's a group, if there's only one person from Mississippi, say that person will be the the primary person. I will though be in that meeting, so they will have the support of somebody uh, to help them through the process and to to, to support them in their meeting. Um, but yeah, we're we're not going to leave anybody hanging hanging out there on their own. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll probably just make sure that somebody is the kind of the the, the, the primary person there. Um, will there uh, will we be able to pass the webinar to others? I'll take that uh, one, Steve. Yeah, go ahead. So we are Matt Huffman asked that question. Thank you, Matt. I saw you also raised your hand. So glad you got the chat option there. Um, Yes, we will be recording this and we can make it available if you'd like to share with others within your team or your company, it will be available. It will be on our website as well as on social media, probably in the next day or two. Any other questions? Well, thank you. We're all in this together. We appreciate each and every one of you for taking this time this afternoon. And if any other questions come up, my email is pretty simple. It's director at nasco.org. So please feel free to reach out. Um, the more we can come together as an industry, the stronger we're gonna be. So wish you all well and health and happiness and happy Thanksgiving and all that. And so uh, thanks again, very much appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. All. Thank you.